Greetings to you all, my dear friends, and may this time of devotion find you at peace and in a prayerful place. As human beings, we all love to socialize, don't we? We love to get together around the braai, at a dinner with friends, perhaps at a coffee shop. And for me personally, I love socializing before and after services, and especially good time of socializing for me is during our fellowship groups. We by nature are gregarious, made for fellowship. We spend much time together, we enjoy the conversation, both talking and hopefully listening to. Often a relaxed time, a time just to get away from some of the hardships of life. And we spend many hours in fellowship with our friends. But why don't we do that with God? It's what God wants. He wants us in fellowship with God's self. He wants us to have this close relationship with him. He knows what's best for us. And yet we give him so little of our time. A short time and then you say, that's enough. I need to move on. I've got so many things I need to do. And yet we don't do that when we're with friends, do we? We forget about those things of the world while we're with our friends. And so we should do the same in our relationship with God. We just have to turn and look at Jesus and realize there we have such a great example. He spent so much time with his father, sometimes all night. And even many Christians do the same. There are many books that we read or hear of, 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 of Christians who spend an inordinate amount of time with, with God. Leo Tutu, the Reverend Bishop Desmond Tutu, says that he spent up to seven hours a day in prayer with his Heavenly Father. I'm convinced and I can testify to it that when we make time for God, God will make time for us. And all those activities that we need to embark on, God will help us to get through all those if we steeped in time with our Heavenly Father. Earlier this week, I was doing a devotional reading from one of the set-down lectionary readings um, from Romans chapter 12, uh, verses 1 to 12. I'm not going to read them all, but I suggest that you go through them. They really are very inspirational and a great guideline as to how we should live as Christians. But two verses of, from that reading particularly spoke to me. Now, verses 11 and 12. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Beautiful verses. Persevere in prayer. We are called many times in scriptures to do just that. And what is persevering in prayer about? It's about socializing. It's about fellowshipping with God. And those two verses give us many pointers as to how we can make our our prayer life more meaningful. We need to be zealous about prayer, ardent about prayer, that is passionate about our prayer. Patience too when, we, when we're praying. We don't always get the answer straight away, do we? And rejoice in prayer. Enjoy our prayer time. If we look forward to our prayer time, it will make such a big difference to our spiritual walk. The psalmist in Psalm 109, verse 4 says, and, and I read from the, or I use the, the New King James Version uh, for this particular verse, says, but I give myself to prayer. The psalm is attributed to King David, and he says, my priority is prayer. Shouldn't we make that verse our priority too? But I gave myself to prayer. 
Prayer should be first and foremost in our spiritual lives. Charles Spurgeon, the very well-known 19th century theologian and somebody who's still very influential and inspirational today, says we need to be fervent in prayer. That is fanatical in prayer. Our quality of our prayer must be a top priority. Too often, he says, one of our common faults is that we get distracted. And that distraction injures us, he believes, and it's an insult to God. Sorry, just hang on half a sec. My, uh, my phone has just beeped. I just want to check and see. Maybe it's an important WhatsApp message. Don't we do that so often? Even in our prayer times, and I know I'm guilty of it. There are times when in the middle of the prayer, I stop to check to see what my cell phone might be telling me. Friends all, let us make, even though it's a couple of weeks into the new year, a resolution to transform our prayer behavior, to make our prayer time more meaningful and more joyful. When we were friends, that's exactly what we do, don't we? We make it more meaningful and we make it more joyful. Why don't we do that with our greatest friend, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And of crucial importance is we need to make time for God. And when we do that, God will make time for us. And if we're not sure how to do that, let's pray to God and ask God to help us to make our prayer time more meaningful. A blessed weekend to you all. May you your prayer time be joyful and it may continue and grow in passion.